Welcome back. So the, the question was, what instruction does God give us in the following scriptures? Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. So what instruction does God give us? I think it's clear. He wants us to give him the first fruits. What does that mean? He wants us to make giving to his work a priority. It shouldn't, uh, I think often what happens is, is with Christians is they want to buy this, they want to buy that, they want to get a certain house, buy a certain car, spend money on, on various places. And what ends up happening is God gets the leftovers. And usually the left, first of all, that's not consistent with scripture because God says we should give them the first fruits. But secondly, the leftovers, which are usually small as well. And um, God instructs us to give them the first fruits. In other words, make giving to his work um, a priority. And when you give God the leftovers, you're not gonna experience the joy and the blessings that come from giving. The Apostle Paul instructed the Corinthians to give regularly. Here's what he said in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. Now about the collection for God's people. Do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. So I think the key there is that God is saying we need to give to his work regularly. Um, weekly is ideal, but if you're paid every two weeks, or even if you're paid once a month, that's, that's fine too. Um, but give to it regularly. Too often I see people when they defer their giving and they give a, a large percentage of their giving in the last month of the year in December. That's not consistent with scripture. Also churches and other parachurch organizations, they have cash flow, they have salaries to pay and, and they have utilities to pay. They, they need the, um, the cash flow on an ongoing uh, monthly basis. The third thing I'd suggest is think and act like a steward, not an owner. We are stewards of the money and the possessions that God has entrusted to us. God is the owner. Remember that was discussed, I think, in the second session? Just biblical stewardship is to acknowledge that we're, we're the steward. We're managing God's money. So as you give to God's work, don't think of it in terms of giving God your money. You're really giving back to God the money that he's given to you, that he's entrusted to you. And as steward, um, we need to use God's money according to God's will. And part of that is certainly giving generously to his work. Um, it's really important. Haggai 2.8 says, The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The fourth point I'd like to make is that we should consider it a privilege and a joy to give to God's work. In other words, we need to have a biblical mindset regarding giving. God does not need our money to accomplish his work. It's a privilege and a joy to give to God's work, but never forget God is the greatest giver of all. In 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7, Paul said, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you, you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And that's critical. We need to consider, we need to have the right mindset um, that, um, that consider it a joy and a privilege to give to God's work. And then you'll start to experience the joy of giving and you'll get, uh, you'll get excited about it. Point number five, what did Christ admonish us to do in Matthew 6, 19 to 21? This is a cre real key um, scripture dealing with priorities. What did Jesus say in this scripture? Jesus said, do not, build up for, sorry, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. So Christ is really, um, what did he admonish us to do? And what are treasures in heaven? What are treasures on earth? The video is gonna stop. Uh, discuss this if you're in a small group. Write down your answer and then click on the next video for the suggested solution.